Hi guys and welcome back to The Restoration. I'm so excited. This is a historic episode where I actually start the reassembly. The first week of November here in 2015, it's been unseasonably warm and I was on vacation and so I was able to get the last of the major parts repainted to start the reassembly. So we'll show you that, but first I have to tell you, this morning I was pretty upset. I had a meeting with a broom and he was extremely late, but when he got here he told me he had just overswept. <laughs> a broom overswept? <laughs> That's hilarious, Jaster. I'm very apprehensive to take this thing apart because they're all different links. They're all set up and that means I'm going to have to try to figure out how to get them set up right again for the steering. Now it's time to blast that uh, hub part. A little concerned about it because they have bushings in it so I got to make sure I mask that off nice so it doesn't get sand up in it. So I stuck some paper down in it, some paper towel that is down in it, and some tape and got the sand blasting. I'm going to try to open this thing up, take a quick look in inside that. This is the, um, the dry the steering wheel fine. I forget what it's called. I'm going to see if I can get this thing open. Steering column, there it is. Once again, I'm extremely apprehensive to take this apart and I know I say that a lot but the reason is is I'm pretty sure I can get things apart my issue is I'm not sure if I can get them back together correctly and this this one really scares me once I got a look at it I'm, I'm so glad I did take it apart because it really need to be cleaned in there just a bunch of dried gunky grease Well, the steering column is all torn down, and I'm going to wire wheel all the paint off of here and uh, get this cleaned up and, and painted. I got two more things to break down to get cleaned up and painted, and that's the brake band and the blade engagement. So, time to get those broken down. Got that thing apart, got that pin out of there. Now let's sandblast it. Just needs to be uh, the sand wiped off and it's ready for paint. Now guys, here's the start of the reassembly. The tires are the first thing that uh, get put back together, so I'm getting the valve stems in here. First time I've ever done that, and uh, I just used a little silicon lubricant on there and uh, got it in. Well, this is yet another one of those things that intimidate me. Uh, I'm out in the shed with this tire putter on her back, back attached to the floor, and I'm going to try to get this tire, these tires on. Um, I don't know how well this is going to work. I've never done it before. And I'm uh, going to give it a shot. Use a little silicone or silicon, silicone spray on here to, as a lubricant. See if we can get this tire on. I saw guys on YouTube take it and just. Holy cow, it went on. Okay. All right. And now to get um, get the other one on. Let's see, put a little more 
lube on it. And we're gonna lube up the, the rim. Looks like it's got lube on it. Get some under it here. Guys, I sure hope I don't screw up this uh, screw up this finish I have on there. Um, I went inside and took a look on YouTube, and it looks like I got to use this side. So let's see here. After hours of frustration and watching YouTube videos and trying and trying and trying, like Kenny Rogers says, you got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. So guys, I gave up and went to the tire shop. Ta-da! There are my tires. That's the good news. The bad news is I couldn't figure this out how to get them on. And uh, the tire shop kind of really banged up. A, this one actually is good. But, like, this one's good. But this one here, they really banged up the paint. And there's some banged up paint on there, so I got to get these things uh, sanded, masked, and reshoot those in a hurry as well. Well, I re-sand blasted the uh, gas tank here. Got this uh, cleaned off. There's a couple dents right here, so I'm going to... Put a little filler in there and get that sanded out. Well, I said body filler and it kind of is. This is glazing putty and it's a lot easier to sand. So I, I use that on these little minor dents. A couple of the black parts here need to be knocked some of the roughness down. It was blown and it got some dirt into the paint. So I'm going to scratch that up. And I'm going to turn that uh, one more coat of black on it. And after looking at my video, I realized this shouldn't be orange, it should be black. So I got this scotch right up and I'll put some black on that. Okay, it's a beautiful day today. It's in the 50s, so I got to really do some painting. These are all the parts up here that are going to be Alice Chalmers orange. And the ones down here are going to be black. I'm trying to keep them separated so I don't screw up the colors. But um, all of these need to be primed, and that's why they're out here. I'm going to put the epoxy primer on them, then um, I'm going to get them painted. Well, here are the parts with the epoxy primer on it, and they turned out well. That epoxy primer, it, it lays down so well. I wish that paint, you know, laid down like that. Everybody would be a pro at painting. Um, but yeah, just nice and, and, and smooth. I hope I can get the paint on there as nice. Well, with me, it's always two steps forward and one step back. This is a step back where the guys who put the, the tires on did scratch up the paint. I scratched him the paint up. So, I saw a guy on YouTube. I wish I could remember his name, but um, he, uh, he showed a technique on masking a tire. And it's a pretty, pretty neat little trick. Basically what we're going to do is take some cardboard like a cereal box or something and Take it and place it on your rim. Take something hard like a hammer and you want to rub the outline of it. You can't tap. I started tapping, but I figured out rubbing works just as well. Now, once you get that, you take and cut just right on the inside of that circle, probably about an eighth of an inch or so, 
and first thing I did was deflate the tires and uh, once the tires are deflated now we can push that down and it actually goes right under there and now I'm going to take tape and mask off the rest of them. Now I can get down in there without uh, hitting the paint that without getting it on the tires. Both of my sons are dorks. <laughs> that stuff turned out really, really nice. Nice good finish on them on everything. The stuff that didn't, I scuffed up and reshot. Getting these masks off now to touch up the scuffed up paint on that. Man, it's a beautiful day out here. It's uh, November 2nd or November 3rd. I think it's the 2nd. It is so nice out. It's getting to 70 here in Chicago. Anybody that knows that weather doesn't get like this. So I've got a reprieve. I've scuffed up this um, frame and I'm going to paint that. So hopefully I'll have all this painting done so that I can start the reassembly here real soon. Well, I sanded down the spots that had been hit and scuffed up and some of it went down to bare metal. So I'm repriming that bare metal and then we're gonna get on the uh, paint. And now they're all primed with the epoxy primer black and now the gray primer. I'll throw some color on there now. Well, here's all the little pieces that I found in my little thing that need to be painted as well. So I got those all primed up and I had so much primer left that I decided to, this is going to need a lot of painting to, I mean, um, sanding on it. So I'm going to start building up the layers of primer on it now. So in the spring or if I get time this well, I don't think I have time this week but anyway in the spring I'll start sanding on that and getting it filled with filler to level that out perfect and the tires are ready they're all primed and ready to paint Well, while the weather's nice, I decided to prime this, and then I thought, why don't I start blocking it as well? Because um, before I get the paint on it, I'm going to make sure I get it blocked. So, let's try it at blocking. Got 150. We'll see how this works. Well, you can start seeing the highs and lows. We'll take that down. We just want to make sure we don't hit, once we hit uh, the black epoxy primer, we'll stop and recoat it. Well, I got her scuffed up a little bit, and I realize the paper keeps loading up. And I'm going to have to figure out a better way to do this. So, might have to wait to spring to do this, but. Uh, May I may throw one more coat or two of primer on there and let it sit for the winter. I'm so up with my, upset with myself. This uh, this face plate here, I was looking for it, and my phosphoric acid dripped down on it and got that kind of messed up. I was trying to keep it so I could see where the decal went. Um, but a lot of junk on it right now, so I got to wire wheel that and get it cleaned up. 
Well, it's the first week in November. I've got an excellent break in weather, so I'm doing my Vetus painting. Uh, I had initially done this, and you can see where it's not quite right here on the edges. So I am going to scuff that back up, reshoot the black, and then take my time and do the masking. I couldn't get the tape right, but I got a different method I'm going to try to mask it up and get it painted beautifully. Believe it or not, I'm doing this thing, shooting it one more time. Got another nice day out, and so it uh, still needed a little bit of tweaking in those corners. So I'm shooting that, and then I'll shoot the whole thing one more time, and hopefully I'll be done with that, because that's like the fourth time I've had to do this. Anyway. Well, it turned out really well, except for a couple places where the tape pulled off paint. So I'll touch that up by hand and right here. Other than that, it turned out pretty doggone good. I didn't realize until I started the reassembly on it that these bearings in here was bad. And I struggled and struggled and struggled with it. Then when I looked at the diagram and figured out that I needed new bearings, I went and bought some. Oh. And there it is, ladies and germs, the very first stop, the very first part that I've got painted and finished. It's the steering column. I'm going to hit the set screws with some paint. But that's it. It's, uh, it's together and ready to install. And now, back to Tractor Chat. In color. Ooh, ooh. Hi, and welcome back to Tractor Chat, the tractor talk show where supermodels or hot Hollywood starlets can ask those tough questions like, do I stay naturally aspirated or do I go with a power adder? For those of you who are just tuning in, you have missed a fantastic show. Now, when most guys hear the name Chrissy Teigen, you naturally think roller bearings. But as we found out today, she's an expert on thrust bearings, ball bearings, needle bearings. Chrissy Teigen, thank you for stopping in and teaching us the entire world of bearings. A Sports Illustrated swimsuit model, an absolute encyclopedia on bearings. Guys, we're almost out of time. We only have time for one more viewer letter. This one is coming to us from Emma Stone, and she writes, Dear Jayster 1963, my name is Emma Stone, and I am a foxy Hollywood actress. As a matter of fact, I'm so good looking, when I walk past a group of men, I hear their heads snap, as each one says, Ahooga! I miss today's Jayster when you were a gangster, tractor, rapper, when you went by the incredibly hardcore DJ name of... Tim, would you please belt us out a melodic tune from your old school album, I Have a 410 Single Shot in the Trunk and a Bird Shot Shell in the Glove Compartment. You know, I do miss that song, Emma, and I am going to sing that for you. So band, just like we practiced in the old days, give me a beat. They got it right. 